Everyone dreams about living an uncommon life, but how we define that dream is very different for each of us. And for most, it's a lifelong pursuit. Welcome to the Uncommon Life Project Podcast. We're going to introduce you to people who are living that life or enjoying the journey to get there. We're going to also give you some tools, tricks, and tips for starting or accelerating your own efforts to live an uncommon life, a life worth celebrating and savoring. Please welcome your hosts, Brian Dewhurst and Philip Ramsey. Hello and welcome everybody to another episode of the Uncommon Life Project. I am your host, Philip Ramsey. And I am Brian Dewhurst. It is a good day today. I can't wait to get into this. Man, if if anybody ever figured out the uncommon path as well as us, it's the guest on the show, Junior Achievement. But if this is the first time listening for you, or if you're a regular listener, thank you for being an uncommoner, as we call them. Uh, we're really excited that you're joining us if it's your first time. But Brian and I have a little bit different approach on finances and wealth. Uh, one, wealth is way more than just the dollars in your pocket. So that's kind of fun. The other thing is it's, wealth is a, a mindset shift for us, and especially this uncommon mind shift that we get to have every day, get to work with our clients and help them change their mindset into what is it that God truly blessed you with? How, does, how has he gifted you? How is it that you want to live your life every day? A lot of people would say, I only think about that in retirement when I'm 70 or 65 or 59 and a half, where Brian and I challenge the uh, client and the people we talk to of like, no, let's start doing that passion and what you're excited about right now. And how can you use your dollar bills to unlock that passion? So Junior Achievement is also doing this uh, in, in a big scale and is working with uh, younger adults, which gets both Brian and I super excited. So welcome to the show, Colin Lane. Hey guys, how you doing? Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So let's quick run over the bio because that's Brian's job. <laughs> and then we'll go into all the questions that I have because there's a lot. All right. Colin is in his second year as the Director of Programs for Junior Achievement of Central Iowa. Prior to his time with JA, he spent nearly 14 years in public education for Des Moines Public Schools. He has taught fifth grade for seven years, was an elementary tech teacher, and eventually became an instructional technology coordinator as a member of the district-wide curriculum team. Colin has his BA in elementary education from Wartburg College and his master's degree in educational leadership from University of Northern Iowa. Fellow Panther. Oh, man. Hello. That's me. Hey now. That's me, yep. buddy. Colin lives in Grimes with his wife, Janae, daughters, Addie, Cora, and their dog, Wendell. He is also the head of boys soccer coach at DCG High School. Welcome, Colin Lane. Let's go. <laughs> All right. Here's where we're going to jump in here. Did you ever in your, I'd say, education know that there was something like junior achievement out there? Not in my, not, no, not prior to becoming a teacher, I guess. Uh, you know, growing up, I didn't have you know, programs like this. And, you know, as I talk to people across, you know, our network, at least, they say the same kind of thing, you know, like, hey, we never had this growing up. Uh, we love this, that kind of stuff. So, um, no, I never had it, you know, growing up, high school, middle school, anything like that. Um, and if anything, you know, as I look back on that, it's like, man, this is the stuff I really needed to start exploring, you know, as I was making those big decisions in my life. And, you know, since I didn't do it then, now is a good time for me to start, you know, helping others figure that part out of theirs. Absolutely. Yeah. Love I wanna, that. I want to start with what is Junior Achievement? Because I just found out about this organization last year and my mind was blown. Uh, so tell our listeners about Junior Achievement, when it started, what your mission and vision is, and kind of the overall rundown. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so Junior Achievement is actually the country's oldest education-related nonprofit um, in 2019, Junior Achievement celebrated its 100th year um, as, as a nonprofit, all supporting schools along the way. So there's definitely a deep history with JA across the country. Um, there are about, you know, there's over 100 Junior Achievements, um, you know, spread out throughout the United States. And so it's a, it's a beautiful network of, of people trying to accomplish the same types of things. And, and you know, what JA focuses on is entrepreneurship, work readiness, and financial literacy. And so we like to tell, you know, schools that, that we're here to help you, you know, with your kids figuring out about jobs, money and businesses, you know, things that they're all going to have to be exposed to. They're all going to learn. They're all going to have to interact with regardless of what they choose for their future. Um, the, the unique part about junior achievement um, is that 
you know, our programs don't usually go directly to the classroom teachers because, you know, our mission is seriously rooted in a connection to the community. You know, if you think about, you know, your, your middle school, your, your elementary time, you probably knew your parents and you probably knew your teacher and you knew what they did and you kind of knew what a teacher did. But outside of that, you know, you may have known a few other people. So, you know, that connection to the community and the career paths and the organizations that all work together is something we want to start spreading the horizons uh, of our students with. So, um, you know, that's what that's what junior achievement as a whole is, is all about. We focus in the K-12 space. And so our programs are really aligned to those, you know, those grades. Um, and we have, you know, over 30 programs that we offer in a variety of different ways to all those grade levels. So, uh, yeah, we're really excited about what we do and we're really excited for the next hundred years. For sure. That's a really huge accomplishment. So kudos to Junior Achievement for the old century. You know? <laughs> um, so it talks about uh, just some of the programs that you provide for that K through 12. Maybe the ones that you get excited about or the ones that you see the biggest traction for children and like this aha moments. What are those? Yeah. So I think, you know, the whole reason I decided to switch out of public edu- education and, and come to Junior Achievement was because as a classroom teacher, I had uh, experience all seven years as a fifth grade teacher to a program called J.A. BizTown. And that's uh, really it's the, the shining star of our office here in central Iowa is that program, J.A. BizTown. And, you know, as, as a high level, that program is all about getting kids at a elementary or fifth or sixth grade level to explore what business is specifically, you know, they learn about business, they uh, at school, they apply for jobs, they interview for jobs, they get, you know, essentially, they earn a job. And then they get with their business group. And there's CEOs, there's CFOs, there's construction workers, disc jockeys, salesmen. I mean, it's uh, an awesome entity uh, here in central Iowa. As soon as they're done preparing for all of that, they come to our facility for a four hour simulation where they run the city for a day. They actually execute the jobs that they've practiced and they've earned in their time in the classroom. So I taught that program. It's still around. We love it. And, uh, you know, if I think back to my favorite part of teaching those those lessons, uh, it, it was a lesson on opportunity costs. So imagine fifth graders thinking about opportunity costs and that every decision they make, whether it's a financial decision or not a financial decision, there are things that you sacrifice or give up to make that decision, which I think is a huge alignment to, to, to what Uncommon Wealth does, is, is make you think about those things and what's worth giving up and what's not totally. worth giving up. I was and then say, time maybe talk some, to some, some of our that. clients so, now? You know, <laughs> yeah, Jay BizTown is the number one for me uh, in my experience. But, you know. So let's talk about J.A. BizTown yeah. because this is a funny thing, I think, to give you edification. So my daughter is going to J.A. BizTown, I think, uh, next week. Oh, great. She is so excited about it. And yesterday I was like, well, what are you going to decide? Like, this is a pretty big decision. Let's talk through this. And uh, so we talked about it a little bit and she was like, I want to be a teacher. And then realized that wasn't a teacher out, you know, in the JA biz town. Uh, and so then she came back to me this morning. She's like, I think I've changed my mind. And I was like, let's talk through it. <laughs> so it gave us a great opportunity to just really talk through what you're talking about is these decisions financially and unfinancially decisions that actually do impact what you're doing. I love there's an opportunity for my daughter to be able to spread her little entrepreneurial wings in an environment where she isn't just going to get crushed. So great job. I'm glad you brought up JA BizTown because it's really a cool opportunity for people. I want to say one thing too, real quick, because this is an immersive experience at your physical location. You have like I kind of think of almost like a children's museum effect, but they're stepping into like a makeshift town at your office. There's actual, excuse me, I'm bad on a cold today. There's actual like storefronts within your office and they get to actually immerse themselves into this experience. Yeah. I mean, and I think that's the key. I, Brian, I was going to cover that exact same thing because that, that is, I think, the, the distinguishing factor of junior achievement is the experience part, the simulation, right? Like, in a classroom, you're used to being talked at. You're used to, you know, get, getting information constantly throughout the day and never having a time to really process, experience, and do whatever it is you're trying to learn. And that's what JA tries to provide through either our, our capstone programs like JA BizTown or our classroom programs where we have our volunteers go into a classroom and teach five lessons about these types of topics. So uh, that's what we try to do. We want the kids to experience it um, over just hearing about it. 
because uh, there's a huge difference in that. And I think, yeah, huge. Jay Biztown is, is one of the ways that we exemplify that. So let's talk about the uh, in the classroom experience, because you do have a curriculum based type program for K through 12. And walk us walk our listeners through that. And then also maybe like how they could bring this into their children's school, because that's kind of something I'm working on right now. Yeah, so uh, our classroom programs are really the foundation of junior achievement. So if you think of the 100 years in existence, we didn't always have programs like JA BizTown. You know, we did have some really solid, um, you know, entrepreneurial type programs, uh, you know, in the early days, which is when it was all founded. But the core of JA for the past 100 years has been our ability to support classroom teachers with community volunteers in programs that we have K-12. You know, in K-5, we really focus on uh, you know, just have them thinking about themselves, their own wants and needs, and then start to think about the communities around them, the businesses around them, how money moves within a community or a city, you know, and start to explore, you know, that very relatable area of their life. Mm -hmm. And then as they get into middle school and high school programs, they start to distinguish a little bit further. And now you're talking specifically about, you know, maybe it's JAB entrepreneurial, where by the end of it, they have a business plan that they're done with. Maybe it's something like JA personal finance in the high school where they maybe are exposed to a financial professional talking about good money management tips over the course of six sessions. You know, we try to kind of cover the gamut and we try to find the best possible volunteer to head into the classroom that has that real world experience, that life story, those experiences that maybe came from work or, 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 you know, anything like that. And deliver that to the kids and share that to the kids. Cause there's nothing better than a story, right? Yeah. I want to be super specific because I think it's super important. I'm just totally blown away by what you guys provide. So like in the K through five uh, example, there's a fee to get this into your child's classroom, right? So I think that, can you speak to that fee real quick? Yeah, absolutely. So um, the biggest thing for our area is last year, we were the number two growing area and students served. Um, and so we want to be smart about that growth and make sure that we can sustain it. And so, you know, Brian, you mentioned that in areas where we don't currently have JA funding, you know, there is a, a small fee to schools to help us just be able to provide that programming and continue to provide it across our entire territory. So, so yeah, in areas that are, you know, further outside of the Des Moines area where our funding doesn't exist, you know, there's this, there's a small fee. Um, you know, if, if it comes from a school, we try to keep it at about $100 per class. Um, that helps us, you know, provide the kid of materials, recruit, train the volunteers, support them in the process, um, and, and just make sure that the overall experience is good. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, in our K-5 space, um, you know, there's six programs to choose from, and we deliver them across the entire school if necessary. If the whole school wants it, we can absolutely provide that. You know, if it's just a couple of teachers, we, we can provide that. But we get involved with schools in a variety of ways. You know, sometimes it's a teacher that reaches out and says, hey, I'd love to have Jay in my classroom. Other times it's a principal that says, bring it into our school. And sometimes it's businesses or parents that say, this is important for my child. What can I do to get it into the classroom? Yeah. And I think when you say kit, it's really cool. You guys actually have like a, uh, a bundle that comes in a, you know, it's like a lunchbox, but not a lunchbox. It's for education. <laughs> But it is a kit of materials that takes the volunteer or the teacher, whoever's, you know, uh, instructing the curriculum, you know, through uh, the different materials and each of the kids in the class gets this kit. And it's actually really neat. So, yeah. Yeah. The materials are, are what make it, especially in the elementary, you know, because the kids want to do something. They want to interact with something. So, absolutely, you know, our volunteers don't go in empty handed. They have an entire you know, like I said a second ago, a kit full of games and activities and group work. And there's always some kind of takeaway for the kids, whether it's a wristband or a car, like a tiny little toy car, not a real one. I want that kit. I want <laughs> you know, that kit in my hand. <laughs> but um, we make it something that is fun for them and easy for the volunteer to use. And, and then working with the kids through an active group work. And so we make it real quick and easy for them. Sure. Uh, so let's talk about the graduate numbers. Let's talk about the success that junior achievement has seen and that like maybe some of the biggest success stories and then what you're trying to accomplish in that classroom. Um, and then I've got other questions, but let's just start there. Yeah, definitely. So um, I think one thing about our, our, our specific location here in central Iowa is that, you know, when Jay Biztown came in 2000, 2001, we had a huge focus on making sure that the students got to experience that, which ended at, you know, fifth or sixth grade. 
And so the focus was so much on elementaries that we almost forgot about our middle school and high school programs. And that's something that I'm really going to be intentional about at my time here at Junior Achievement is making sure that we have awareness around our middle school and high school programs. You know, but the successes we see uh, are really through some growth that we can actually record through some of the programs we've got. We do pre-testing and post-testing for some of our programs. And it's, it's not specifically, you know, you know, what is, um, what's the difference between a bank and a credit union? It's not questions like that. It's more like, you know, I'm confident that I can recover if I struggle with a financial choice. You know, it's more, it's more, it's deeper than just a yes or no, or a multiple choice question. It's trying to measure an impact, um, or an empowerment piece. And so we're starting to collect that data and the programs are having promise right now. Every single program we deliver for the most part is giving positive results with empowerment of students. Um, the other thing that I would say that is sometimes really hard to quantify, but is no is equally as important are again, the stories. You know, we have teachers, we have students, we have people that came to JA BizTown 15 years ago that remember it, that can tell you all about it, and that you can tell it made an impact in their lives. And for me, the numbers are great, but the stories mean everything. Absolutely. It was interesting. I was talking to my dad. I got introduced to you guys last year. We were going to use your venue for an event. And I just was talking to my dad about junior achievement. I'm like, I had no idea this even existed. And he's like, oh, I did junior achievement when I was in high school and did a business plan and presented it to the president of Mutual of Omaha. <laughs> and this whole, I mean, just launched right into this story that you know happened 50 years ago. And it's just such a testament to the programs and the importance of this. I'm going to soapbox for just a second that I think it's insane to me of like how financially unprepared most of America is. I think the latest statistic was like 60% of retirees have less than $40,000 in like 90% of the countries living paycheck to paycheck. How we are not instituting and making it mandatory for financial literacy education in our schools from K through 12th grade. And so you guys have those, those tools and the kits and the curriculums, you organize the volunteers. I mean, you literally make this about as easy as it possibly could be. Walk us through, because the state of Iowa has made a historic, I think, law that now high schools have to provide financial literacy education. Yeah. And that's something that we've been definitely a part of since its inception uh, in terms of, you know, making sure that everybody knows that we could be a a partner in that area. But yeah, the state of Iowa um, has made it a requirement for every student, every high school student that uh, graduates from the state of Iowa institution, you have to have a semester long financial literacy course. And so currently there's still, you know, the back and forth of figuring out what that exactly looks like. Mm -hmm. Um, But we're starting to see it take shape as we speak. You know, schools are starting to make adjustments in their staffing. They're starting to make adjustments in their uh, course requirements, as well as, you know, what courses they offer. And and we're trying to make sure that everybody realizes that, you know, Junior Achievement not only has great supplemental type programs through some of these, you know, six session visits of volunteers, but now we also actually have a, a whole semester long course called JA Financial Literacy that specifically meets this demand and meets this need. Um, you know, all of our programs, K-12, our standards aligned, and this one is just that much further along that helps meet that requirement for those schools. And it doesn't sacrifice, which is what I love, it does not sacrifice the volunteer component. Mm-hmm. Even though it's a semester-long course, there is still touch points by, you know, organizations or community members to help solidify some of this learning they're doing in the class. I just think that's huge. And I just implore those listening, or if you're active in PTO or a parent or you're an educator or a principal or administrator, I just don't know how we're not bringing this in to our schools K through 12. Uh, so yeah, I just get involved. I think this is incredible uh, information. Walk us through, uh, you have a couple other different programs. One is coming up. Um, this is going to, we're shooting this before it's going to air, but uh, this event is the stock market challenge, I believe. Yeah. Walk yeah. So we, uh, our stock market challenge uh, here in central Iowa is end of February this year. And right now we have 12 different high schools that are going to be competing. Um, and what the stock market challenge is, is it's a 60 day trading cycle and each day lasts a minute. Um, and so it's, it's really more of a team building piece, right? Because the, the students have to work together very quickly. They have to make quick decisions based on information they're given, hot tips and their own portfolios and and company news that comes out. 
And so they have to just constantly be watching the market and figuring out what they should do with, with their own holdings um, to make the best decisions possible for their team. Uh, it's a ton of fun. Uh, one of the things that we've added this year to the stock market challenge is, you know, hey, we realize that the stock market challenge is kind of an unrealistic thing that we want students to make. We want them to understand that this isn't exactly how it works. Mm -hmm. It's a game. It's fun. It has some real world components. But for an hour before the stock market challenge uh, starts this year, we're going to have an investment hour. And during this time, kids are going to hear from financial professionals about, hey, what are some good decisions I can make right out of high school that are smart, long-term investments, you know, those kinds of things. What is diversification and how does that, how does that help me? And what could that mean for me as I start to explore these, these investment ideas? And then ultimately hearing from a panel, right? Just get five, five financial professionals in front of them and have the kids ask some questions. It's always a great event. So uh, yeah, we're pretty pumped. Very cool. I think that's really cool. Let's talk about college because I feel like these people are students from K through 12. I think if they especially had exposure to junior achievement, they're excited about maybe some of these entrepreneurial ideas. And then their parents are telling them to go to college, which I'm not saying is wrong or right, but uh, that they go to college. And then it's almost like this little incubator of don't worry about your finances, just focus on your education. And I feel like the complete financial spoke of what you just taught could be lost pretty quick in four years. And now you're behind the eight ball with a whole bunch of debt and you got to go work at Wells Fargo at a cubicle job because you just got to pay the bills. So how do you get to the college? Um, what kind of, I'd say, maybe curriculum do you have for college students? Oh man, that's, that's a great topic. And we talk about that a lot here because uh, we see the same thing, right? That it almost seems like the, the next step that's required from some families. Um, so the best thing I can relate to that is, so we also have a, a brand new program that we started this year. Uh, other J's have been doing it for a while, but it's called J Finance Park. Um, it's more like J BizTown where they run a business for a day, but instead of running a business for a day, they run their financial life or a fake financial life, a simulated one, of course. Mm. Um, but the reason I bring up that program, not only is it new to us, but there's a, there's a lesson within that curriculum that the teachers work through their students with. And it's titled, college or not. And that's one of the first things that they do is they explore, is college a good fit for me? You know, and it, it's a personal thing. It's not a parent's opinion at this point. It's something that you're looking at, is college something that I want to do? And for many kids, the answer is going to be yes. For some kids, the answer is going to be no. But the reality is, whatever you choose, you're going to have to manage money. Mm -hmm. And then we take them through Smart. several other lessons after that one that help them go through those steps. And so we agree. It's not the next step that is uh, a good fit for everyone. But at JA, we want to make sure that there's a nice balance of offerings so kids don't seem like there's a pipeline they have to follow. And I like that, that you wouldn't have the influence of the parents in that decision. Like, make it or not, but know that there's consequences, right? Right. <laughs> Financial consequences for that. I want Brian to talk about this because we do some coursework, classwork up in uh, Sergeant Bluff, Iowa. And we had uh, one of the most fun uh, times we had when we walk an individual, it was, a, it was a girl, through her next maybe five, six years. And she wanted, do you remember what college she wanted to go to, Brian? Stanford. I'll never forget. <laughs> so talk to us about that because it was so fun just to be able to get on her level for a second and then just kind of work through those decisions and how they're going to impact her future. So go ahead. Yeah. So it was really insightful just to be inside the high school and ask them questions. And we've, we've done this in Sergeant Bluff. We've done this in Waukee. And it almost seems like the kids, I don't know how to put it. I'm kind of missing the word, but like they're almost competing at how much money it's going to cost to go to college, if that mm. makes sense. Like, oh, mine's going to be more expensive than yours. This girl wasn't like that. So I'm not saying it in that way, but basically wanted to go to Stanford and live in California uh, to become like a dental hygienist. And so we just walked through, we pulled up online, like what does Stanford cost a semester? You're obviously out of state. Uh, walked her through, you know, are you going to get any scholarships or grants? And by the end of it, it basically was like, you're going to be a quarter million dollars in debt to make 60 grand a year. Living in California, by the way. <laughs> right. <laughs> paying like whatever, almost, you know, their state income tax, federal income tax, paying over 30, 40% in taxes, potentially. 
And then we started talking about like our monthly budget. Yeah. Where are you going to live? It's kind of expensive. And then at the end of it, I'm just going to boil it right down. She had $15 to eat for the month. <laughs> uh, not going to make it. And what we said, and we're like, we're not saying that living in California isn't a good idea, but do it in a smarter way that once you get out of that four years of college, you're not coming straight back and living in your parents' basement. <laughs> so is there like a community college around here that you can get all your school and then go out there and actually live comfortably with not a noose around your neck of student loans? Yeah, totally. I mean, we, we, we see that same kind of thing. Uh, so we partner with, we partner with several organizations, tons of organizations here in the metro area, but you know, one of them is, is a student lending service. And when we talk to their, you know, their leadership, one of the things they come to us to talk about is, Hey, you know, something that we're seeing is exactly as you said, guys, you said they're taking out entirely too much money in student loans than what they'll ever be able to repay based on their, your, their career choice, right? They're, they're going to make $60,000. They got quarter million dollars in debt. Uh, and so they're talking about, Hey, okay, how do we get to the preventative side? Because by the time they've taken out that loan, there's not a whole lot that the lending service can do, but they're really working hard to make sure that students are educated on how much is this career going to pay you in the first five years? And is it realistic to take out that much money in order to do it? And if no, what are your options? You know, like you said, you don't need to go to California to be a dental hygienist. It's a cool life experience, but you could probably get some cool life experiences elsewhere. That's a lot cheaper. So, you know, we see that all throughout and, and our curriculum is designed to to help that part. But yeah, we agree with you hundred percent. I like too with JA and what you're doing, because it's not like it's just a mill of like, everyone has to go to college. Like you're trying to teach real life wisdom and principles to help people wherever they end up. And I think that's huge because there's, I just get this, there's such a pressure for kids to go to college right now. And I think it's predatory lending the way these institutions are approaching these kids and families. And, and I think you're starting to see the costs pull back. I just got some information that Iowa state is trying to shrink their enrollment. They have a lot less international students. And I think you're going to start seeing college prices plateau because it's just the income isn't there to support these, um, these costs that these universities are charging. Yeah. And I, th- I think the other thing I was going to add to that, which I completely, you guys are right on track with a lot of this. Um, something that I, I do appreciate about JA is, you know, in this whole financial literacy world, right? We think about the numbers. We think about, does it make sense? The beauty of JA is its partnership with career readiness as well, right? And then on the entrepreneurship side as well, because that gives kids an idea of what they could be doing immediately. But those three together are a natural fit right? Like you want kids to think about their careers and how it financially impacts them. And you want to think it the opposite. You want them to think about their financial, what they want financially and what careers can support that. So uh, our programs that are well balanced in those three areas really help them explore the world outside what's expected of them, I guess, if that's, if that's something that is expected of them. That's really cool. So let me talk about this. Uh, we believe here at Uncommon Wealth Partners uh, and the Uncommon Life Project, we believe that mentorship is a cheat code of life. <laughs> yes. If you have a good mentor, they will exponentially shorten your time period of how stupid you are for the most part. So how is mentorship and JA, is there a big emphasis on mentorship? Is it not? And I will say this before you answer that I feel like if you are going to go to college and you don't have a mentor in the future career that you want, I think you're doing yourself a disservice. So I'll give you that caveat. So let's talk about mentorship and JA. Yeah, I I love what you just said there because I think about what you just said and I apply it to my own life, right? And I think about if I would have had a mentor before going to college, helping me decide and make some decisions, that would have been extremely powerful for me. So I, I completely agree with what you said there. Sorry, say the question one more time. No, so <laughs> that was a really good point, by the way. How's mentorship and JA? How do you partner? And, and when you think about mentorship and you think about, uh, let's say a kid wants to be a lawyer. Great. Uh, so you're going to go to college and you're going to go and you're going to sign into your general ed. Then you're going to go to your other specialized classes. Uh, but at the end of it, you're going to get a really bad professor. And you're going to hate that class. And what I think a lot of people do is like, well, I guess lawyer being a lawyer is not for me. I'm out let's change majors. And then you're in for the five-year path. If not the six-year super senior, you get it. 
But if you have a good mentor that's pouring into you and saying like, hey, Drake is a really good for undergraduate. And then Drake is also good for your uh, master's and, and your uh, post-college. GD. Yep, GE. So, but there's someone pouring into you, trying to walk you through and giving you kind of a path for you to go down. And if you've job shadowed that mentor, you can see like the end of the tunnel I love. I cannot wait to get there. And then as that mentor is saying like, hey, I think you should go to UNI for undergraduate and then get your graduate from Drake. But they are pouring into you and helping you guide and navigate different classes and helping you say, hey, I know that class stinks. I had that same professor or maybe I didn't, but it's important. Hang in there. And you still have that person kind of helping you walk through your path. So does... JA have anything like that mentorship pairing people up like that? Yes, so we do. And and actually this is a program of ours that, you know, I referenced the one that was that JA was founded on, you know, originally, which is called JA Company Program. You know, in central Iowa here, we haven't run one in a few years. And so it's a goal of ours here to bring that program back next year. But um you know, the ones I've talked about so far in terms of our programming really are that that connector piece, right? Like you, you get to know somebody for a little while, but it it isn't a true mentorship, especially as you as you describe. However, J Company program provides a team of a team of students, right? So maybe there's maybe there's four on the team, maybe there's eight on the team. It provides a team of students with a team of mentors. And the whole purpose of getting this team of students with a team of mentors together is for them to create their own business for real real money, real bank accounts opened, real products or services that they're creating. Um, And then ultimately, these mentors are guiding this team of students through the entire thing, through the marketing, through the creation, through the execution, through the business plan, the financials, ultimately leading up to, did you get a profit or a loss? And then let's liquidate the company. Uh, That's what this program does called J Company Program. And uh, I would say in in the realm of mentorship, that is a high need for JA. Um, at J of Central Iowa, because other areas across the country run it, um, that we want to bring back and we want to connect that at a deeper level. Because, you know, what we see across the country that run that program is those students stay in touch with those mentors. You know, Absolutely. those students that ran that business for a semester are always in touch with that, you know, marketing, you know, marketing exec that helped them wow. with the marketing part or, you know, the CEO that came down and helped them with the business plan. Think about those students who have a positive interaction or experience with that whole uh, process. The amount of people are going to be like, wait a second, I want to do that in college. Help me define my process. Help me uh, make me smarter in this field so I can go out and do this in real life and I get to do that every day. Like That is powerful experience and one that we need to have way more people get because so many other people are going to try to take them and make them employees for themselves so that they can make more money. And that is important. Totally. And those are those stories. I mean, you guys mentioned that you, you may have talked to somebody that is, you know, over 30 years old and they had JA when they were younger. Chances are it was that JA company program and they're 30 years old and they remember the product or business they created with their team of mentors. So yeah, yeah that's the one my dad was referencing. Yeah. Um, he told me his story. We're bringing it back, guys. We're bringing it <laughs> We're back. Bringing it Let's back. go. Well, I think it's so, we talk about this in some of our content that it's such a default of like, well, you got to go to college and get a job. And then somehow that justifies the debt. But why isn't the default, especially in high school and college to like, just start something and try it in terms of a business or a product or an entrepreneurship. And then the fallback could be getting a job. Like, oh, I tried to launch this product and it didn't go well. That's just not for me. Great point. But at least you have that experience. And and so often, you know, we meet people that are like, they've been in the work world or corporate America for 10 years and they're like, oh my gosh, I, I can't do it anymore. I've always had this idea, but now they're making 80 to a hundred thousand dollars. And the thought of going out and quitting that and getting rid of their benefits and all this stuff that we're taught makes you safe it's like handcuffs and they can't, I don't want to cross over because I've, I've tasted this cash flow too long. <laughs> and so it's like, we agree that when kids are in high school and college, they have the most ability to take risk financially because they have the rest of their life ahead of them. But that doesn't mean just putting all your money in the stock market. It's mm-hmm. Like, what are you going to learn from that? But if you actually tried to launch something, 
that you're super passionate about, the wisdom and understanding that's going to come out of that is going to be monumental for the rest of your life. And I feel like we as a society, and that's why I love, and that's why we wanted to have you guys on the show with Junior Achievement, is that these programs are in place and have been in place for a hundred years. And we should be plugging into these to let kids have more of those experiences. It's great that kids can memorize stuff at school, but at the, at the end of it, they're going to be in the real world and they're going to have to understand money and they're going to have to understand business if they want money. And so I just think it's super important that these programs get highlighted uh, and let people know that they're available right here in our own communities. And so I want to edify again that J, Junior Achievement is a hundred year old national program. You operate in every state. So wherever you're looking, uh, I'm sorry, wherever you're listening to this in the United States, you could plug into Junior Achievement. So how do we do that? Well, how do we plug in more? How does the listeners hear more about what they can do to help? Because I think there's a lot of our listeners, like specifically, that's like, yeah, we need to really pour into our next generation in this way. Talk to us, Colin. Yeah. So, I mean, depending on where uh, you mentioned it a second ago, depending on where you live, there's a J office that can serve your area. And uh, I mean, as, at a national level, you know, our website, uh, JUSA.org or junior, just Google junior achievement even, and you'll see not only our national site, but then all the subsidiaries here in central Iowa, it's just a matter of getting, reaching out, you know, reaching out, telling us what you're trying to do, what you'd like to get done and how Jay might be able to help with that. And then it's it's a it's a personal conversation. It's a okay. Well, what can we do? What what would work for you? And and let's get on it. You know, we don't turn anyone away. You know, if it's if it's something that that we're able to provide a service for, um, and it's within that K twelve space, I'd say that's probably the one stipulation that we do have is is we do try to focus our programs in K twelve. If it's within those parameters, let's make it work. If it's an after school program, let's do it. If it's during the classroom, let's do it. Um, if it's something else, let's figure it out. Um, so it's just a matter of having them reach out, make contact, put us on the radar and, and, and the awareness piece. I mean, every time I go speak to a company or a group or an organization, I leave them with JA is all about awareness. We're not going to be an in your face organization where we're trying to say, you need to have it. You need to have it. You need to have it. Uh, we want everybody to talk about us because when you talk about us and you come back to us, we know it's a real thing and we know it's something that we're going to have success with. Awesome. Thank you so much for being on the show today, Colin, and sharing the mission and vision and the resources and tools that Junior Achievement has, uh, wealth of information. For sure. And I think if for whatever reason, if, or if you're forever ability that you're willing to advance the cause, it would help the uncommon life uh, and really get people excited about this direction. As all of our clients know, this is a road or a path that not a lot of people go down because they're just scared. And so if you're at this point and you're just listening to us and you are a little bit older and you're stuck in a job, you have a family and you have no idea how to transition to this next uncommon path, that's where we come in. And we really love to help people in that way. And we have a lot of people that we can help and watching their enthusiasm is contagious. So Thank you for all you're doing, Colin. Thank you, Junior Achievement. Happy 101st birthday. Uh, and we are going to be close with you in the future and then uh, currently just to help your, your mission and plan because they are very unified with what you're doing and the Uncommon Path. So thanks again for being on the show. You've been listening to the Uncommon Life Project. I'm your host, Philip Ramsey. And I'm Brian Dewhurst. Thanks for listening. Tune in next time. Bye. That's all for this episode of the Uncommon Life Project. Brought to you by Uncommon Wealth Partners. Be sure to visit UncommonWealth.com to learn more about our services. Don't miss an episode as we introduce you to inspiring people who are actively pursuing an uncommon life.